Good evening and welcome to the 2023 Division I Men's Tennis Selection Show. In this special year where both the men and the women in all three divisions will come together for the championships, the Division I men are also racing to Orlando in order to be called a national champion. Virginia got it done yet again last season, but several teams are hoping to take that crown for themselves in 2023. First and second round matches start later this week with Super Regional play coming up the following weekend. The final eight teams head to the USTA National Campus to compete for a title May 18th through the 20th. As always, our field is comprised of 64 worthy teams, 29 in via automatic qualification as conference champions. That leaves 35 spots for at-large selection. We've seeded the top 16 teams in the country, all of whom will be our hosts coming up for first and second round matches this week. So now the big questions. Who's in? Who's out? Let's find out right now as we begin with the top overall seed in the tournament. We begin to unveil teams on the bracket. No surprise, top overall seed belongs to Texas. The 2019 national champions suffered a third round loss last year that has stuck with the Longhorns for nearly 365 days. A shot at championship redemption begins this year with a massive target on their back as this top overall seed. Added motivation comes from a Big 12 championship loss to TCU. That'll certainly fuel this team. Elliot Spaziri notched the lone point for Texas. He's still ranked as the top singles player in the nation. They open with Texas A&M Corpus Christi Southland Conference champions. We don't delay the drama very long as we go to our next team and a very nervous at large team. But rest easy UTSA making it three in Austin from the Longhorn State. The Roadrunners have the most wins for the program since 1985 and maintained a top 50 ranking all season. 2006 national champion Pepperdine will be the opponent in the opener, fresh off another championship in the West Coast Conference. Next group of four includes Utah, which made a run all the way to the Pac-12 finals and narrowly missed out on being seeded. They face Sunbelt champion Old Dominion in the opening match, back for the first time since 2018. Drake won the Summit League, setting up a battle of the Blues with host North Carolina. The Tar Heels get the last seed line on the bracket thanks to a solid season that saw multiple wins over tournament teams. Ryan Segerman was named to the second team ACC in singles. Fellow graduate student Brian Cernock earned third team honors in singles, while Segerman teamed with Casey Kania to earn first team accolades in the conference in doubles. All right, we stay in the Carolinas. Our next host is ninth seeded South Carolina. Strong season for the Gamecocks. Includes a non-conference win over Ohio State. That's a really good resume builder back in early March. Six straight tournament berths, now 27 overall. And if the doubles point becomes the swing of a tight match, this team does have the top ranked doubles duo in the country. Toby Samuel and Connor Thompson have been spectacular as a pair this season. And for the second straight year, South Carolina State will be the opening opponent fresh off another MEAC title. Another nervous wait perhaps ends now for Baylor, which sneaks in with an at-large bid. The 2004 national champs were in the title match just two years ago. They made the final eight last season, but have had to find new players to depend on here in 2023. In fact, nine of the 11 players on the current Bears roster are either in their first or second year in the program as head coach Michael Woodson looks for some quick learning come tournament time. And it gets feisty early against Florida State. The Seminoles fresh off an ACC semifinal appearance. Baylor actually won a meeting between these two teams, but that was all the way back on January the 28th. We say hello to Wake Forest. The 2018 national champions haven't missed a tournament since 2012, where they will battle Memphis coming up in the opening round. The Tigers have won five of seven coming in. Belmont is on its own very impressive winning streak coming in, having captured the Horizon League Championship in the league's newly formed divisional setup. Belmont did not lose a, to a league opponent all year and has won 13 straight entering the tournament. If they win 14 straight, it'll be quite the story as they travel to our host Tennessee, the Vols national semifinalists a year ago, and certainly have the talent to prevail on all courts to be champs when it's all said and done. SEC Player of the Year. Jonas Monday ranks in the top five in the country in singles and in doubles, partnering with Pat Harper. Monday just needed a little help in the big matches. Off of the seven Tennessee losses this season, think about this, seven times they've lost this year, five of them were by a 4-3 final score. One match either way could flip this team into being a national champion. All right, our next host is Virginia. The reigning champions got title number five last season, returning to the top of the sport after five years since the previous championship. A veteran crop of players looks to keep that good play rolling here in 2023. The ACC champions have won 16 straight entering this tournament, and they have not lost outdoors this year. 
Ryan Getz and juniors Chris Rodish, Anaki Montez and Jeffrey Von der Schulenberg all return from the title team a season ago. And that creates problems for Navy, the Patriot League champions, making NCAA tournament appearance number 12, but still seeking that first elusive match win. VCU has plenty of tournament wins in its history, including the March to the 2000 title showdown as national runner-up, and perhaps there's some magic against Ole Miss in the opener. The Rebels also have a second place finish in their history. That came all the way back in 1995, and they have never missed this tournament in the 28 years in between. Auburn is back with Tyler Stice at the top of the lineup, a three-time All-SEC selection who owns six wins against ranked opponents this season. He'll be on court number one against Cornell, and that might be a must-watch showdown with Radu Papo, who has lost just twice all season at number one singles. UNCW captured the Colonial title for the program's 10th birth, traveling to our host. That's 12th seeded Duke. Pedro Rodenas became the first Blue Devil to earn ACC Rookie of the Year honors since all the way back in 2010. He continues to get better and better as the season progresses. His next singles win will be his 30th of the year, and he holds a winning record on all three of the top courts, including a perfect 13-0 when he's been called upon in number two singles. All right, another banner year on the Ivy League sees Columbia earning the 13 seed and hosting duties of this group of four. Michael Zheng, top ranked singles player in the league this season, just on the outside of being a top 30 ranked player in the country in the latest rankings. He has helped to guide this team to its 16th overall tournament appearance. Columbia welcomes St. Francis of Brooklyn, the Terriers making history already this postseason, securing their first ever Northeast Conference title to make the NCAA tournament for a first time. Congratulations to head coach Chad Davis. St. John celebrating as well. Back for a fifth time. They're your Big East champions set to take on Stanford, which will fly east to join the fun. Overall, there's been 17 NCAA tennis titles for the Cardinal, who feature three players ranked in the top 30 in the nation in singles. Arthur Ferry, the best of that bunch, he lurks inside the top five list of best in the nation. Northwestern made the Big Ten semifinals, and the Wildcats easily earned an at-large selection of the tournament, where a storied program is happy to be back. UCLA had never missed a championship since the tournament format was introduced in 1977. Then the Bruins did not hear their name called last year. Winners of 16 titles overall, the last tournament win coming in 2005. UCLA is building its way back this season and has a spot in the bracket once again. Presbyterian celebrating a Big South Conference title and will travel with the Wildcats and Bruins to Lexington, where another bunch of Wildcats, Kentucky, will be our host as the four seed. The SCC champions may not get the attention of a few teams seated higher than them, but sleeping on this team is certainly a mistake. Just look back a year ago. They were seated eighth overall in this tournament, and Kentucky raced all the way to the championship match for the first time in program history. So maybe their 30th birth this year will lead to the first championship. Liam Draxel, Alafia Ayeni, Josh Lapidot, all first team, all SEC for this team this year. The most awards for this team, first team in over a decade. All right, that is half of the field. 32 of the 64 teams unveiled. So many still to go, including many teams still waiting on pins and needles to see if their name will get called. We unveil the second half of the bracket right after this. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Eight seeds, hosts, and locations have all been unveiled to this point, while another 32 teams have yet to be placed. Let's get right back into it and the second half of our bracket. It starts with the third overall seed, hosting duties belonging to Ohio State. The 2018 National Runner-Ups just wrapped up their 15th Big Ten Championship. The Buckeyes feature a nearly interchangeable lineup. Five players ranked in the top 40 of the most recent singles ranking and two of the top 15 doubles tandems in the country as well. Ohio State has now won 14 straight matches entering this tournament. 
Southern Conference champion ETSU will make its 20th appearance where it has surprised a couple of teams in previous years and looks to be upset minded here in 2023. Louisville heading to Columbus with Etienne Donnet headlining a roster looking to make waves this postseason, starting with a very balanced opponent in Texas Tech, the Red Raiders earning their 19th tournament appearance and fifth straight. Florida checks in next. Head coach Brian Shelton had to replace his son Ben this season after being the top player in the country last season. Ben Shelton's now a top 40 player in the world professionally. So who replaces him on his Gators roster? Well, how about Axel Nev? He's taken on all the challenges at the number one spot this year, and he will again battle all of the top teams, including against another bubble team that gets to shout it out loud right now because we welcome back to the tournament Oklahoma State, perhaps one of the last at-large recipients in the entire field, and they draw the Gators in round number one. Boise State will join the Cowboys, earning the AQ from the Mountain West, and hosting duties for these three rests on the hospitality of Arizona. The Wildcats were the two seed entering the Pac-12 championship, took a narrow loss on the chin from Utah in the semifinals, but they did get wins at one, three, and four singles, showing the strength of this top of the lineup. They will need to be six strong in this tournament. All three losses Arizona has suffered since the beginning of March have come by that narrowest of four, three margins in the final score. So again, like many teams we've seen, maybe just one slot away from making a deep run. All right, earlier in the show, we mentioned the strength of the Ivy League. Top team in the conference this year was Harvard. Second consecutive year that the Crimson were undefeated in Ivy League play, a program that has more individual champions in NCAA tournament history, I should say NCAA history, but the last one was crowned a whopping 107 years ago. So will there be a Crimson player on this roster to break that streak? Harris Walker, top 50 player, a number one singles player for Harvard this year. He is only thinking about team and points, however. He has won five straight singles matches coming in. That's his longest winning streak of the season. He and his teammates battle Siena in the opening round. The Saints with a thrilling run as a three seed to the MAC title, marking a first in program history and now a first time NCAA tournament. Congratulations to that program. Another long nervous wait ends for Arizona State, which earns another late at large berth for the 18th appearance in program history with plenty of NCAA tournament experience against them in the first round. Illinois meets them in the opener, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the program's lone national title. The Illini return after missing out on the field a season ago. NC State comfortably into the field for the 13th time in program history, earning a power conference battle with Oklahoma, which improved seeding with a nice win in the Big 12 quarterfinals over Baylor. The Sooners flexed a little emoji muscle on social media today in anticipation of Selection Monday. They hope to be all smiles with an opening round win. Florida Gulf Coast, the A-Sun automatic berth, returning for the first time in theory since all the way back in 2019 because their 2021 appearance never got started because of COVID, COVID testing issues. This match coming up in the first round has been a long time coming for the Eagles, who will get Georgia in the opening round. A seventh SEC Coach of the Year award for legendary head coach Manny Diaz, who has guided this program to four of its six national titles. And this season, Diaz has some young talent to be excited about, including SEC Freshman of the Year Ethan Quinn. He ranked third in the country in singles in the most recent ITA ranks. All right, just a quarter of the bracket to go. And our next host is Michigan. The Wolverines have missed the tournament just once since 2006 and returned for a 31st time. A run of the national quarterfinals last year included a big win over Texas. Gavin Young and Andrew Fenty ranked top 10 in doubles and have to give the Wolverines hope at the double point to be effective against higher ranked teams if they're to make a deep run in this one. Quick trip north for MAC champion Toledo. Congratulations to the Rockets. They had not won a conference championship since 1973 and now make their NCAA tournament debut. LSU made its tournament debut actually back in the 1970s, 1978 to be exact, one year after he went to a bracketed format. The Tigers have done everything but win it in all the years since this is their 34th tournament berth. The Tigers battle another perennial tournament team in Cal. This is the Bears' 38th appearance, so add them up. That's 72 tournaments between these two teams. It comes after missing out in the field each of the last two years for the Bears, but like LSU, everything but winning it all for the program. They were runner-up back in 1980. Staying out west, San Diego starts our next four teams. The Toreros battled Pepperdine hard in the WCC finals, but came up just short. They still earn an at-large berth against a team that didn't need to sweat it out. We say hello to UC Santa Barbara. 
the champions of the Big West earned their 16th berth in program history. The Gauchos blanked UC Irvine for the title, winning it going away. They won the doubles point, took that one point edge into singles, and then they were up in almost every single match. They won or led in five of the six singles matches, including getting big wins at the bottom of the lineup, closing out the number one singles spot and UC Santa Barbara into this tournament for the 16th time in program history. Another automatic qualifier is Idaho, seeking its first NCAA tournament win out of the Big Sky Conference, which gets them a trip to Southern Cal, the 10 seed, with a staggering 21 national championships, remaining the gold standard for any program in D1. The Trojans make the field for a 44th time, nine of those 21 titles coming in this present tournament format. Head coach Brett Massey hoping to lead his team to a national championship for the first time. He credited his team's competitiveness in winning its fourth straight Pac-12 title last week, getting points from down in the order throughout the entire tournament. As we know, depth really matters in the race to four points. Another impressive season for Mississippi State, earning the Bulldogs the 15 seed in hosting duties. Four athletes earning all SEC honors this season. That's the third most of any team in the conference. Nemanja Milezovic is state's highest ranking singles competitor and has played exclusively at the number one position in the lineup all season. The junior from Bosnia and Herzegovina, he leads the team with seven wins over ranked opponents this year and also has six match clinchers. He will look to close out against Alabama State, the SWAC champions in 2023. All right, we say breathe easy and welcome back to the tournament. Tulane, the green wave, lost a nail biter in the AAC and had to wonder if the ranking would hold up for an at-large berth. Wonder no longer. You are right back in the championship. And Conference USA champ Middle Tennessee will make this a fun opening round match. Fourth straight tournament berth sets a new program best. All right, four teams left, a strong group ready to make some noise. Starts from Texas A&M, the Aggies. Noah Schachter ranks inside the top 50 in singles, and he headlines a very deep roster, which will face SMU in the opening round. The Mustangs knew they would be a fringe bubble team for this tournament, but they took matters into their own hands. They were the team that beat Tulane for that AAC title to guarantee the program's 25th appearance. SMU was national runner-up, celebrating that anniversary of their best ever finish 40 years ago this year. UT Arlington won the WAC to make it back to the tournament for the first time since 2016, where they will travel to our final team to unveil second seeded TCU. The Frogs could actually make the argument they should have owned the top seed overall, having beaten top seeded Texas twice this year, most importantly last weekend for the Big 12 title. They were quarter finalists a year ago. This makes it 33 tournament appearances now for TCU, where depth throughout the entire lineup and a pathway to four points has been a key all season long. It's really hard to find weaknesses on this roster. All right, there you have it. All 64 teams still alive in pursuit of a national championship. We serve it up this weekend at our various local sites with first and second round action wrapping up either Saturday or Sunday at all sites. Super regionals follow the next weekend before the best of the best head to Orlando, Florida to determine our national champion. You can track all of the action and scores here on NCAA.com leading up to the USTA National Campus. And once you're there, catch the championship action on Tennis Channel with the final stage on May the 20th. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Will Haskett. Congratulations and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.